The only reason I looked baffled in the beginning is because I wasn't sure what the freestyle is offering that hasn't been offered before by other companies. There have been a ton of portable projectors in the past, and it's interesting to see Samsung get in the game at a rather lofty price point of $899. Yep. So I tested this one out to try to understand it. First off, I gotta say, not only is it compact, it's also very versatile, thanks to the 180 degree tilting design, and I really like that about it. It has one physical button for the microphone, which you can toggle on or off if you choose to use the voice command features that are compatible with both Alexa and Bixby. The outer case is made out of a rubbery material that can be later interchanged with different colored cases as soon as Samsung actually sells those. The top, or the front, has touch controlled buttons and the freestyle has holes on the sides and at the very bottom for the 5 watt speaker. So the basic selling point of this projector is that it's portable and simple to use. And I like both of those things. After plugging it into a power source, the app starts and the initial setup is pretty straightforward. And in case you're wondering if there's a right side up to this projector, there is. The Freestyle's auto keystone and autofocus feature works great. It has a native resolution of 1920 by 1080 with a maximum brightness of 550 lumens. In short, it has an HD resolution and it gets bright enough in a dark room. I think one key feature of this portable projector is that it has the major streaming services preloaded, which makes accessing them a breeze. To put it into context, the BenQ portable projector that I have don't have any of them preloaded, and because of licensing restrictions, I'm not even allowed to cast or use AirPlay to watch any of my media using my phone. The Freestyle doesn't have this problem, which makes it a truly portable TV screen. But what I don't like is that it also comes preloaded with Samsung's TV Plus app that felt more like an annoying pop-up on a website. Seriously, every single time I power up the projector, a promotion of Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen starts automatically playing. The remedy for this is removing the app, which I did. For the most part, my experience with the freestyle was painless and mildly entertaining. My kids loved it. Being able to move it from room to room is a pretty fun experience. The freestyle can get bright enough even in a dim lit room and the sound can get surprisingly loud. Loud enough that it hardly warrants me connecting it to an external Bluetooth speaker, which by the way, you can. The cord it comes with is actually really short, which makes finding a power outlet a little bit of a challenge. But if you have a power bank lying around, you can actually use it to power the projector. The screen can be enlarged up to 100 inches, which is honestly humongous for just about any application. The Freestyle has a quirky little feature called Ambient Mode, where it lets you project images to the wall as backdrop. You're able to upload your own photos as well. But I think Cinemagraph is especially cool because they're basically like screensavers. In case you're feeling extra cozy or you're locked up in a dark cellar somewhere for some reason. So, so far so good. I'm honestly enjoying this little thing. But there are of course some things I don't like about the freestyle and they're mainly software based. There have been a handful of times that I had to adjust the keystone manually because it couldn't seem to figure out the surface angle on its own. Now, that's not really a problem, but to do that, I had to click my way a few times more than I prefer just to get to the menu. And each time I did it, the blasted Hell's Kitchen kept automatically playing. The app is also a bit laggy at times, so a click of the remote might not register right away. This makes the navigation to the settings a lot more frustrating than it should be. Also, this register prompt occasionally would pop up. Very, very annoying. I just wish the Freestyle had shortcut buttons for the keystone adjustment and brightness. Also, around the outer parts of the projection, the image looks notably softer, almost out of focus. Samsung says the Freestyle can get as bright as 550 lumens, and that sounds really bright, but compared to my old BenQ GV1 that projects up to 200 lumens, well, it's hard to tell if it really is twice as bright. 
the other thing I don't like is that this portable projector could be so much more with additional accessories such as a removable battery pack, but unfortunately, that's not even available yet. But the biggest problem I have with it is the price. I can accept that the performance is acceptable and the general experience is pretty good, but a base price of $899 for a gadget that let's face it, can only be used in very specific circumstances is a bit hard to swallow. After about a week of using the Samsung Freestyle at home, I came to this conclusion. I guess you simply have to ask yourself, how much do you value portability and convenience over actual projector performance? Because if you're leaning more towards the former, I think you're going to enjoy this because I think this is where the Samsung Freestyle really shines. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.